So after having described the, some important uh, principle of safety, such as the safety function and the defense in depth concept, we are now going to see um, in some details the deterministic approach, which is uh, a way to analyze the safety of a nuclear plant at the design stage. So it is not feasible to study with a lot of detail everything that could happen on a nuclear reactor. So it's necessary to make a selection of uh, typical uh, transients uh, and accidents which are representative of a family of uh, events. And for instance, it is not possible to study all the potential size of a break of a pipe. So we will select three representative uh, size of break, the complete rupture of the break, a small one, and an intermediate one. These three studies will be deemed to represent uh, all that would happen in uh, such an accident, such as a, a pipe rupture. And these uh, transients and accident that we call design basis transients or design basis accidents are used to design the safety system to define, for instance, the flow of the safety injection system. So these design transients and accidents are studied with uh, very conservative assumption. And uh, for instance, all the initial parameter will be taken at uh, the worst condition. Uh, and very stringent design rule for the safety system will be used, such as, for instance, the single failure criteria, that you will assume that um, any uh, failure could uh, occur on a safety system, reducing its capacity to counteract the accidents. Also, in this um, kind of study, consideration will be taken for common mode failures. And uh, the, an, an important design rule also is the, the quality of the equipment of this safety system that need to be first classified in terms of quality, design of quality and procurement, but also in terms of uh, qualification, because if the system have to operate in an accident environment, they should be qualified to uh, sustain this environment, for instance, in terms of, of dose, temperature or, or pressure. So the, the design basis events are categorized according to their frequency and consequences. And uh, usually we make a distinction between internal events, that is failure of the system itself, of the component of, of the plant, internal hazards, such as internal flooding or internal uh, fire or uh, uh, load drops, and external hazards, which are the, the events that could occur outside, but that may affect the plant, such as earthquake, or flooding or uh, fire also outside or a uh, plane crash. We will see a little bit later these, how these uh, hazards are, are treated. So an important design rule is that uh, linked the, the frequency of the uh, accident or transient with the, the consequences. The rule is that the, the higher the potential consequences, the lower the frequency should be. So we could distinguish uh, several region. Uh, first, normal operation. Here, the consequence should be very limited, if not nil. At the other uh, part of the spectrum, uh, the accident uh, with uh, potential high consequence should have a very low uh, frequency, something less than one uh, in a million year. And between them, the uh, events are uh, classified according to their frequency and consequence and should remain in this domain. Of course, this part is unacceptable. So it's uh, the way that we define 
what we call the design condition. They include normal operation, uh, transient accident, and severe accident. You have here the uh, estimated frequency of uh, each of these design conditions. Normal operation uh, is something that happens permanently, or it uh, includes uh, frequent transients. Uh, the transients uh, as could happen once a year or once uh, in a century. Uh, the the accident should have uh, uh, a probability, because we are talking here about probability, uh, less than 10 to the minus 4. That is uh, one uh, every uh, 10,000 years. And the severe accident, the objective is to have less a frequency less than uh, one in a million of, uh, of years. So these, <clears throat> the consequence of uh, these uh, design conditions, of course, in normal operation, the consequence of, uh, should, be, should, should remain in uh, the authorized uh, limit because there is some regulation about the, the amount of radioactivity that could be released in normal operation. And using the ALARA principle that uh, we already mentioned, that everything should be done to reduce this release as low as reasonably pra practicable. For the, uh, the transient that uh, has this frequency uh, between one per year and, and 10 to the minus two, uh, the consequence should also remain in the authorized limit. For the accidents and term, there could be some, some consequences. We admit some limited fuel uh, degradation, but the containment should uh, remain uh, completely lictite and uh, no degradation uh, is allowed. And then <clears throat> for uh, the severe accident, the uh, objective is to, uh, th there will be some radioactive uh, releases and the objective is to uh, reduce them also as, as low as uh, practicable. And <clears throat> these design condition, as the word means, uh, serve to, to define uh, and to design uh, the various system of the plant. Of, co of course, for normal operation, you have the main system and their associated, associated uh, control and, and regulation. The transients serve to define the shutdown set points of uh, the various system and especially of the reactor uh, itself, the, that we call the reactor trip, that is uh, the, uh, uh, the control rod uh, falling down the, uh, the reactor core. The uh, accident con design conditions serve to uh, determine and to define and to, to design uh, all the emergency system, including the containment. And uh, uh, finally, the, the severe accident consideration and, and study uh, allows to prepare the emergency uh, preparedness and to define the various uh, uh, arrangements that should be included in the uh, emergency uh, pre pre preparedness plan. So these are some <laughs> examples of uh, design basis uh, accidents uh, which are considered in this uh, uh, deterministic approach. The, the first one is uh, a rupture of uh, a main pri primary piping, such as here. But also we consider the, the, the rupture of the steam line here on the top of the steam generator or of the feed water line, because these uh, events have uh, uh, an impact on the, the reactivity. Uh, <clears throat> I mentioned uh, previously the importance of the steam generator tubes, uh, with, which, which are uh, part of both the second and the third barrier. And so the uh, studies of this uh, accident uh, is something very important because it has a frequency a little bit uh, uh, higher than the uh, other, given the number of tubes uh, which are uh, in, uh, in this component. Um, other uh, accident study is the uh, ejection of the control rod that will have an impact on the reactivity of the core. 
And uh, we consider also fuel handling uh, accident when the reactor is shut down, of course, uh, the, the fuel assembly should be uh, removed and transferred to the fuel uh, building. And uh, so if there is a drop or loss of cooling uh, uh, of, of the, the fuel assembly, these uh, consequences should be, uh, should be studied. So these transient and accident studies are a major uh, aspect of uh, safety analysis. They use uh, very sophisticated computer codes uh, with uh, 3D dimension modeling uh, of thermohydraulics, uh, um, uh, representing the major component, including the hottest uh, fuel uh, uh, pin, because uh, the, the purpose is to limit the temperature of, uh, of the fuel. <laughs> this model includes numerous equations. Uh, simulating very complex phenomena such as the equilibrium between steam and water and the uh, various uh, uh, flow distribution uh, in the various parts of, uh, uh, of the system. And uh, all these uh, uh, calculations, all these models are based on many experiments, some uh, small-scale experiments, but also uh, large uh, experiment on, uh, uh, of course, not a, a real reactor, but uh, uh, facilities that uh, represent uh, most of the uh, uh, major equipment of, uh, of a reactor. So, as an example, uh, let's have a look on what could happen uh, in a large break loss of coolant accidents. Uh, what are the main uh, phenomena and uh, so let's assume at, uh, uh, in, uh, at, at the beginning that uh, we have an opening of a double-handed pipe break. Uh, this is uh, the largest break that could con be considered on the, the, the reactor system. And so immediately <clears throat> there will be a very uh, rapid uh, decrease of the, of the pressure. So three seconds after, uh, the reactor protection system will uh, let the uh, control rod uh, enter the core, and so that uh, we call reactor scram. So now the reactor is shut down. At, as the, uh, the, the pressure decrease and most of the uh, water and steam inside the, the system uh, is, is released in the containment, the uh, pressurizer empty. This is the first. Uh, a component to be emptied at uh, six seconds. And at 10, ten seconds, that now the, the fuel is no longer uh, cool, so the, the, the clad, uh, the cladding uh, fuel will reach its uh, uh, peak temperature. Because very soon after, the uh, accumulators will discharge. Our accumulators are a large quantity the uh, large tank um, with uh, several hundred of uh, cubic meters uh, that are at a pressure of 40 bars and that are connected with the primary system through a check valve. So when the pressure in the reactor system uh, goes below uh, 40 bars, this check valve automatically open and these uh, tanks are discharged in the system trying to uh, uh, replenish the uh, the system and very soon after the low pressure safety injection system will con injecting water in uh, uh, the reactor uh, coolant system. At uh, 23 seconds there will be a, an equilibrium of pressure between what is in the reactor system and the containment and the containment uh, pressure will increase at, at this point so the, this pressure will be uh, around three or, or four bars. And thanks to uh, the uh, accumulators discharging and the, uh, the water injected through the uh, safety injection system, the vessel bottom uh, will begin to be refilled. And uh, this is uh, the, the core itself uh, will begin to be reflood uh, around that time. 
And uh, you will see now uh, on a small video the result of a calculation uh, with the, uh, you, you will see how the, the amount of water and steam evolve in the system and uh, how the temperature uh, evolve. So at the beginning, the circuit is full of water as in blue, and you see now the water being discharged in the containment as the temperature begin to increase. The, uh, the system is still uh, uh, hunting. You know, the steam generator are full of uh, high temperature steam. And soon the uh, accumulator will uh, discharge to begin to uh, replenish, to uh, refill the the system. You know, the yeah. Now the bottom of uh, the vessel begins to be full of water, and the mixture of steam and water begin to reach the level of the core. Now the safety injection system operates and you will see progressively the blue color coming up into, into the core. So you see, so this is how it should be uh, complex to represent all, all these elements and all the simulation of, of this uh, transient. You have in this phase complex phenomena with uh, uh, flushing in, uh, in, in the core with a mixture of, of steam and, uh, and water. And I think we can stop the, uh, the movie here. So the main <laughs> safety criteria used for this accident, for the, this loss of cooling accident, uh, the, the condition to uh, be uh, fulfilled is not to exceed uh, the temperature of the cladding higher than 1200 uh, degrees C, um, and uh, to limit the oxidation of the cladding to 17% of, uh, of its thickness, because in uh, this kind of uh, accident, there is uh, the, the zircaloy metal of uh, the cladding is oxidized by this uh, the mixture of steam and, and water. And uh, so this oxidation uh, reduces uh, the, the thickness of, of the cladding and uh, uh, reduces capacity to maintain the the, the fuel inside. So this is for uh, the uh, the loss of coolant accident. For other type of accident, uh, uh, ten percent of uh, cladding rupture may be uh, allowed. And uh, for secondary side breaks, uh, that uh, could have some impact on the reactivity of the core. Uh, the, the the criteria is not to uh, return the core to criticality. So you have uh, some, some elements of the kind of studies that are made uh, at the design stage uh, to ensure the, the safety of the plant and that the, the, the most important uh, uh, accidents, uh, the one be, be, being this loss of coolant accident, uh, which uh, uh, serve to design most of the safety system of a nuclear reactor.